How's it going, everyone? Hello, hello. All right. We give everyone a few minutes here to jump on. As I mentioned earlier, my plan was to jump on early, a little bit early, to get it, give everyone a chance to uh, find the feed. The last few times that I've had these live streams, people end up, uh, some people message me during the event saying, hey, Jesse, we can't get on. I don't know. Well, we can't find the feed. That kind of thing. So uh, I made it a point today, especially to jump on a little bit early while I'm pouring out my paints. So first person that could uh, or that hears me, please say hello. What's happening, Jessica? All right, can somebody give me a sound check? Can somebody please give me a sound check? Let me know if you can hear me okay. That would be fantastic. No echoes or anything like that. Oh, need some black. Give me a second. I got my black paint here. What's up, Heidi Lou? Okay, Debbie, no worries. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Got my wife on here jumping on saying it sounds good. Fantastic. All right, everyone. So like I said, we're giving people a few minutes here to jump on and uh, get everything situated on their end. So we are going to get started pretty quickly right at 2 p.m., which is about 11 minutes away. Now, I had originally planned on doing from this for my vacation in Mexico. Unfortunately, due to uh, issues with our Airbnb circumstances that we couldn't control last minute, we had to scrap plans. What's happening, Cabbage? So we ended up in San Francisco instead. We actually uh, took a little road trip up north uh, from Southern California where we live. We drove up. We stopped um, a few different places. and today. Last night, we found ourselves in San Francisco. So again, unfortunately, the plan was uh, to do this from Mexico was scrapped simply because of uh, unforeseen circumstances. So we ended up moving the vacation, Mexico vacation, later down, uh, hopefully towards the end of summer. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, we are in in uh, San Francisco right now. We had a nice drive up last couple of days. Really pretty sights all over the place, so we are enjoying our stay up here. But thank you, Heidi Lou. But all right, guys, I'm just getting my colors ready. Like I said, right at um, 2 p.m. my time, which is nine minutes away, we're going to get moving on this. But for those of you that are joining in a little early, if you guys have any questions, please put them down below. Try something a little different today. What's up, Guadalupe? How's it going? Oh. Sounds like we got a good little group right now. I hope everyone's excited. I'm in my hotel room and check out the background. This was purely coincidence. Uh, the background is you know, all these paint splotches. How, how crazy is that? Sounds good, Heidi Lou. Yeah, go get that gym. Very important. Uh, let's see. What's up, Jill? How's it going? So I'm using my my um, I'm using my laptop to live stream today. Something I don't usually do. The camera is not very good quality, but it's okay. I guess it'll work. Uh, but I'm using my phone over here to, to uh, my good camera on my phone to focus on our image. So we should be good to go. What's happening, Hannah? How's it going? Are you painting with us today or are you just coming by to uh, say hello? Lynn Dunn from Sebring, Florida. What's happening, Lynn? Welcome back. But anyway, everyone, again, check out my background. All those paint splotches on the wallpaper, just coincidence. They must have known we were coming. They must have known things weren't going to work out in Mexico. So again, for those of you that maybe just jumped on, originally the plan was <clears throat> we were flying out to Mexico last Thursday. Uh, but problems, we had problems with our Airbnb, bookings with our, our Airbnb, our communication with our host. And... Um, we ended up having to scrap things. It became too difficult, too crazy to uh, change plans and find a different place last minute. So we decided to take a drive up Pacific Coast Highway, make stops along the way. Uh, we are in San Francisco as of last night. So this live stream is coming from San Francisco. The show must go on, right? So, <clears throat> yes. Hi, Netta. How are you? Says Netta asks, do we need to do the sketch? now or will you show us how to do that so netta i posted a video about i want to say three four days ago where i actually show how to uh how to do that let me see if i can um 
Let me see if I can find the page. Hang on one second, okay? Hold on one second. I'll show you where you can find it on my Facebook. Really quickly, give me a second. I'm going to get over to that part, and then I'll share my screen. But great question. So if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have the video uh, or the sketch done, you're going to want to do that first because we, we're we going to go get right into the painting part of this right now. Hang on a second. Let me see. I tried sharing my screen the other day. Let me go ahead and do it now. Hold on one second. Share screen. I'm going to share my Facebook Chrome tab. Let's see. Right here. All right. Now let me go back to live, to my stream and make sure that – there we go. Okay. So we're currently – I'm sharing my Facebook page. You guys see – let me uh, – so right up in here. If you go to my main face, uh, Facebook page, page, Painting with Jesse here at the top, there's a tab that says videos. Okay, we got live right here, and then videos. This is at the very top, right? This is the very top of my painting with Jesse. Page. Scroll down just a little bit, you're gonna see these tabs. If you click on videos, <clears throat> it'll take you one, you'll see our live stream. That's the live stream going on right now. Okay, but you'll see right in here. Whoa, it's not in here. I'm sorry, let me back it up. It is, you'll find it here under events. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep. So on the main page with Jesse page here over to the left, you can click on events or here under more, you click on events. It'll take you to this page right here, which shows you all of all of my upcoming events. Right here, you click on this. It's gonna take you to the event page. Okay, shows the live stream here at the top. But here under the discussion tab. Under the discussion tab, right down here, you're going to find the pre-prep. Here's the pre-prep for Monday, posted to June 12th. Okay, You'll want to follow this video where I teach you how to draw the butterfly. Okay, So again, go to the event tab on the main painting with Jesse page. And then scroll down a little bit. You want to hit, anytime you guys go to one of my events, if you're on the event, Details such as supplies list and everything else is found right here. Okay, you guys see this here? Right in here is where you find all the supplies under the About tab. Under the Discussion tab, you're gonna find you know comments, posts, questions, things like that. But if you scroll down on that discussion board, you'll find the pre-prep video. So you can actually go do that now and then come back. And if you jump on YouTube, Hold on, let me stop sharing the screen. If you if you jump over to YouTube on YouTube, you can uh, back the video up, even if it's a, even though it's a live stream. I'm live streaming both to Facebook and to YouTube. You can go over to YouTube and you can back the video up to the beginning and then uh, I'll watch it from there. Okay, so again, you'll want to sketch it first and then go from there. What's happening, Don? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Are you painting with us today, or are you just hanging out? Hopefully, you're getting the chance to paint a little bit. But uh, anyway, folks, we got about four minutes. You got it, Netta. No worries. So again, folks, I just want to repeat that. If you haven't had a chance to paint uh, or draw the butterfly, okay, good, Don. Fantastic. Awesome, awesome. If you haven't had a chance to draw the butterfly, you want to go over to that live, uh, not the live session, it's a recorded session. Uh, for the, the pre-prep, it's about maybe 20 minutes worth of drawing, nothing too crazy, but uh, you'll get a chance to draw it and then uh, come on back and paint it with us, okay? Dina Johnson, or is it Deanna? I think it's Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Altamonte Springs, awesome. Where is Altamonte Springs, Deanna? Where is that? I've heard that name before, I believe. Just curious as to where, where, where that is. But anyway, folks. Uh, again, check out my background. A uh, few events that are coming up. I'll be with Justin. Let's talk about that really quickly. Some stuff that is coming up. I'm going to share my screen again. I get a little practice on sharing my screen. Florida, okay. Orlando. Oh, fantastic. Very cool. I'm going to share my screen again. Give me a second. Gives me a little chance to practice on this. Last week when I tried it, I, uh, I, it didn't work. Anyway, so... I'm sharing my screen. If you ever want to know what events are coming up on Painting with Jesse, on the main Painting with Jesse page, let's go over to that. Okay, right here. 
right here. We're on the main painting with Jesse Page. If you scroll down right in here, if you click on more, you can see the drop down. If you click on this, it will show you all the currently scheduled events that are coming up. Hang on one second. Let me see. Am I missing something? Yes. So today we're doing the Monarch Butterfly. Uh, on the 23rd, we're doing the Hope Tree, which is basically this cute little drawing, uh, little painting, not so much drawing, but painting. Oh, there it is. Of this tree, a little heart in it, overlooking the ocean on the little hill. So that's Wednesday, June 23rd, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, that's the next event coming up on Painting with Jesse. Actually, I might, I might, um, I'm planning on scheduling the sun and moon combination that I talked about. Let me get over to that really quickly in between today's butterfly event and that hope tree painting. We'll see. This guy right in here. Okay. So I'm going to try to sandwich that in there where we, I teach you how to draw and how to paint this really cool little piece. But anyway, let's get back to the live stream. Stop sharing my screen. Let's get out of there. Stop screen. There we go. What's happening? Melissa Spence from upstate New York. Jesse, how's it going? Awesome. Fantastic. Of course, you can change whatever you want. Blue and purple would be awesome. Heck yeah. Blue and purple would be, would be amazing. Actually, I would even recommend, oops, I just moved my camera. I did. I would recommend looking up some, uh, some blue butterflies. You know, I think that I've seen plenty of butterflies that have a kind of a blue, purplish uh, color. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Any color you guys want. All right, everybody, it is officially 2 o'clock, so let's get going. You guys are on my painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook and on YouTube. We're live streaming through both uh, channels today or both uh, platforms. I just wanted to really quickly, I've already explained this earlier, but I want to say it again. Uh, I am on vacation. Originally, the plan was that we were going to be live streaming from central Mexico, this little town called uh, San Miguel de Allende. We're Beautiful place I've wanted to go to for a long time. Unfortunately, at the very last minute, we had to change plans. Things didn't work out with our Airbnb. Uh, and it was going to be a really big hassle to try to book something new. There was a miscommunication between, between us and the host. And anyway, we decided last minute to scrap those plans. We're already, we were already at the airport. We decided to uh, drive up the coast, take Pacific Coast Highway all the way up. We're in San Francisco as of last night. We've, been made, we've made a few stops along the way, but here we are in San Francisco. You guys are in my hotel room with me. You can see the background there. It's just coincidence, but it's a paint splat pattern back there. Anyhow, we had to move our, our vacation, our Mexican vacation, to later in the summer, maybe in September, when they do those really cool uh, uh, celebrations in, I think, the middle of September. So. Anyhow, unfortunately, we had to do that, but we're still having some fun, and the show must go on. So today, we're painting our monarch butterfly. Let me give you guys a really quick close-up. So we got a little butterfly right in here, right? We got uh, got lots of glitter on the piece, for those of you that want to use glitter. And I've got all the butterflies in the background. Uh, this painting, of course, has to do with the uh, migration pattern that these butterflies make between Canada through the United States and then down into Mexico and back here throughout the year. Not sure exactly, you know, what the whole, how much time it takes, et cetera. I didn't research too much about it, but this is a very popular uh, butterfly, the monarch butterfly. So as you guys know, for those of you that have been painting with me for a while, everything on here is optional. I think you've already heard somebody ask if they can change colors. Of course you can. You can change colors uh, if you'd like. But uh, the colors that I'm going to be using today, I'm actually using some new paints that I picked up. There is a Blick Studio about 10 minutes from where I'm staying. And Blick is a really big art uh, store. They have a big one in San Diego. They've got this big one in San Francisco. Anyhow, I went and picked up some Blick paints. And I'm going to try those out today. First time I'm using them. The colors that I'm going to be using are right here on my plate. I've got some, I got a darker blue that I'm going to mix with some white for that background. Okay. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that my tint, that, that the color is going to be a little different than on the original just because the blue is not the same color that I used for that background, but no big deal. So I've got some dark blue. 
I've got some orange and yellow that I'll be mixing for both the flower and the butterfly, a little bit for the butterfly. And then I've got some black. I didn't put any green on, green on my plate yet. We'll add that here while we're here, why not? So let me put that down here, a little green for my stem. And then I'm also going to add a touch of this red that I might use on to accent the petals a little bit. So I'll put this over next to my um, red, I'm sorry, my orange and my yellow. Okay, so those are the colors that I'm going to use. I'll be using the basic colors that I'll be using today. Of course, I've got a water cup. I always have a water cup where I rinse my brushes. I use this as a rinse cup. So I've got that. The brushes that I'm going to be using today. Now, these are just a suggestion. I have more brushes than I really need. So let me get that one out of here. So I've got a one inch flat brush. I'm primarily going to be using this for my background. Okay, I'm painting the background in for, with that. I've got a little number, this is a number four flat, really old brushes that I got here, but they're still pretty good. I'll be using this primarily to paint the inside of things like in here, the wings, okay? Again, a little small flat brush there. I'll also be using this for the petals. And then I have two smaller round brushes, okay? I've got a number three round, good for detail work. I can use this to paint the inside, for example, the body here on the butterfly. Also the details around the edges. And then I've got a zero round brush. Okay, a little tiny thing, a little pointy thing. Again, details. The antennae on the uh, on the butterfly. Okay, uh, smaller details on some of the other bu uh, butterflies in the background. Paper towels, very important. You always wanna have paper towels with you. Things happen, uh, messes happen, and these come in handy. So. You want to have a bunch of those. Of course, I'm going to be drawing and painting or painting today on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Same size as what's on the original. You can use whatever it is you've got if you're using a uh, mix a multimedia pad. Lots of people like to paint on those. You can use a piece of wood. Some of you like to paint on rocks. Uh, whatever it is that you've got. I've had people paint on fences, on those TV dinner tray thingies. So any one of those, okay? You want to, whatever you got is good to go. But all right, everyone, let's do this. Yes, really quickly in case somebody's asking. I'm sure it's going to come up in the questions or if it hasn't yet. This will be, this is being recorded. So uh, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, when this session's over, when the live session's over, you will be able to go over and paint with the recorded session. All right, let's get going. Let me move this, let me change the screen here so that, <clears throat> let's see, there we go. You've got the large image is the painting. I've got a separate plate here. I'm going to take my uh, brush here, my big one inch brush. I'm going to grab a lot of white, most of the white. I'm just going to scoop it up. I'm going to bring this on over to my plate here. Okay, find a little spot for that. I'm using the same brush. I'm going to scoop up some blue. Now, I don't need a whole lot of blue yet. Um, so I'm going to bring over a little bit at a time. Just about like that, just a little bit of blue. And that's probably too much. We'll see here in just a moment, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my brush. Now this is pretty thick paint that I'm using. So I'm gonna be mixing water with it throughout the process. So I'm taking my brush and I dip it into my water cup, my rinse cup, okay? Then I bring that water that's in the brush, I bring it over to my plate and I start doing this. I just start grabbing this paint yeah, this blick paint is pretty thick. Okay, so I'm using most of the white right now, just mixing that well with that water. Now I'm going to take a little bit of blue and I'm going to bring, start introducing that a little bit at a time. The darker color, you usually want to introduce that in a little, so you have lighter color, and then you start to introduce the, the darker color a little bit at a time, okay? Didn't mean to make as big of a area with this paint as I did. Usually I like to keep my paint more controlled, you know, smaller, smaller little area, but this is okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get a color that's uh, a nice light shade of blue, and we're getting pretty close here. Okay, I'm going to take my brush, I dip it in my water cup again, bring some of that water over, 
There we go. What I want to do, because I want to make sure that I have enough paint. I don't want to have to switch. I don't, I don't want to have to mix more paint as I'm going along and painting my background. I want to make sure that I have enough paint to do my entire background. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit more white. I'm gonna bring it over to my plate over here, my my paint palette, and then just bring more of that white paint over. Again, I don't want to have to mix paint part way through because what that can be having to mix paint to try to match your original color can be tricky. So it's better to have more paint than what you need and have some left over than to have to mix more paint. So here we go. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start painting my background. And before, I, what I'd like to do is I like to outline. So I'm going to go ahead and take this big brush. Some of you may need to go to a smaller brush. And I'm going to use this to outline my butterfly first. Okay. So before we do any of those small little butterflies in the background, the butterflies that are flying around back there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, paint in our background first. Now, if your painting is a little smaller than mine, if your flower is smaller, you want to switch over to a smaller brush to do this part of it, up to you. But we're going through and we are just outlining everything. Being careful not to get any paint on the petals. There we go. That's pretty much it. And then we just go through and we start to paint this in. Now, for my background, I'm going to use these brush strokes that go in different directions, short little brush strokes. This is usually what I do when I have to paint around a drawing like this. If I didn't have the butterfly already drawn in, and I wanted and I wanted a really nice, smooth, clean background, what would I do? I would paint long horizontal brush strokes all the way up and down the canvas, or I could use long vertical brush strokes. Whichever one I decided to use, I would use the same one throughout. But in this case, again, because I'm painting around something that I drew on the canvas first. I typically will use these little short brush strokes all the way around. Those of you that are new, what I do is I'll illustrate a step on my end, and then I will um, give you a little time to implement it. Of course, most of you that have been painting with me for a while are probably already working on your background. You guys already know what's up. Then in between steps, as I'm waiting for you to catch up, I answer questions. I say hello to you, some of you. I see her say hello to me, but mainly I answer your questions. Okay, so I see me put my brush down. I'll tell you right when I'm looking at the, you'll see me looking at the screen. That's your cue to ask questions. If you guys are painting with me for the first time, please make sure you say hello. Let me know where, where it is that you're painting from. Now, I did something here that I don't normally do. I I learned to stay away from or try to stay away from using paper plates as palettes, right? So I've got a paper plate here. I normally use a plastic plate or a styrofoam plate. Yes, I know styrofoam plates are bad for the envir environment. Um, I try to avoid those if I can. But these paper plates, paper plates that aren't coated, can uh, will start to dissolve a little bit and little bits of that paper will will stick to the paint and i've got that happening right now not a real big deal but just a little lesson when i went to pick up plates this morning i didn't find any anything else so i grabbed these again no big deal but for those of you that maybe haven't ever had this experience stay away from paper plates because they will once you start to do a little mixing here on the plate once you start to you know it's water-based, right? So it'll start to peel and roll into your paint. Not the end of the world, but you might have to do a little bit of cleaning up here like I am. You see these little, you might be able to see some little balls of 
little little tent looks like little you know little balls. It's actually the paper. All right, there we go. Now I may need to do a second coat of paint here later on before we paint in any of the little butterflies in the background. We'll see. It is a little bit washed out. It's kind of looks kind of nice, but we'll decide on that in a little bit. Okay, so for now, let's go ahead and get you guys caught up. You guys got about two minutes to get your background in. I'm just going to take a moment here to rinse my water cup. I'm my big brush in my water cup. Kathy, how's it going from Southern California? How's it going? Elizabeth Blanchard, Tri Cities, Washington. How are you? Let's see. Elaine Serrano, sounds good. Sounds fantastic. My pleasure, Amanda. I wish, uh, so I wish I was doing this from Mexico because that was the plan, the whole thing, right? I kind of built around my painting, my, my vacation. But, um, but it's okay. The show must go on. It's still going to be enjoyable. We're having a good time eating lots of, lots of good food. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's all, all good. But you are very welcome. I'm going to try to do a second one. I'm going to try to do that sun moon one from the vacation. If not, I'll do it. I'll do it when I get home, uh, you know, after the vacation's over. But we'll see. What's happening, Adriana? How are you? And then Karen Dab uh, Dabin from Mayetta, Kansas. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Karen. I know oftentimes, you know, um, I don't get the pronunciation correct. <laughs> but it's all good. What's up, Replica? Welcome back, Brenda Trumbull, Cassopolis, Michigan. Hi, Brenda. Vivian Alvarez, what's happening? What's happening? Hi, EJ Lamb from Canada, first timer, Spring Springfield, Ontario, Canada. Amanda, where where are you? You say uh, your country has had closed borders since since March 2020. Where are you? Crazy. That's a bummer. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So another 30 seconds. Okay. Vivian Alvarez from Massachusetts. How's it going? Dubon. Okay. Got it. Dubon. Fantastic. Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. That's right. I know. I think we've, we've uh, communicated a couple times before. Okay. Closed borders, huh? Bummer. Lori Murphy, wax paper over paper plate. Yeah, great idea. Yes, that is that's that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Wax paper over paper plates. But all right, everyone. So here we go. I've got my background painted, and like I said, more than likely I'll come in and do a second layer later on. Just let me remove some of these little um, bits of balled up paper on the on my canvas here. Just taking my brush here and pushing those off there as best as I can. All right, no big deal. So next thing that I'm going to start on is I'm actually going to going to paint on the inside, right in here on these the uh, the wings in between all of the dark lines. Now what what the way I'm going the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with this kind of orange yellow combination, and I'll mix that here in a moment. You could just use yellow. Uh, Orange, if you'd like. Maybe yours is just yellow. I know somebody, like I said, somebody's already asked about changing colors on the butterfly. You can use a completely different color. It's up to you. But I'm going to start adding that color on the inside in between these, what are eventually going to be the black lines, right? All these pencil lines that we drew on the during the pre-prep, those are all going to be black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little flat brush, okay, little number three flat brush, I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of this orange, and why not? Let's bring it over to the mix plate here and grab some yellow, a little bit of yellow. Don't need a lot. I'll mix those two. Now, in this case, I'm not going to add any water, or if I do, it's going to be very, very minimal. Okay, I want to avoid having more of that paper um, Start to peel off my plate. But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start to add this color. Now, where my pencil lines are, like I said, those lines are eventually going to be going to be black. I'm just going to leave a little tiny separation, so I'm not going to paint over them. I want to be able to see them 
when I start to add that black paint over them, right? When I start to outline them. Again, make sure that you're using a brush that's appropriate in size for the size of your butterfly. If you're too big, you're gonna to start to paint over your lines and you could still see them through the paint, I'm sure, for most of you, because or this orange color, acrylic paint tends to be a little bit transparent. But in some cases, if your pencil lines are a little too light, or if you're using a really soft pencil, you can remove those accidentally when you paint over them. So just be careful. If you're not having that problem, if you notice that when you're painting over your, your lines, they stay intact and you can still see them through the paint, well then, go ahead and paint over them. It just makes it a little bit easy, easier to, to do this process. Okay, there we go. In just a moment, once I've done painting the majority of the of the uh, wings in this color, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and use that to get into the little tiny areas that I might be missing right now. So again, even if you paint over your brush, your drawing lines, as long as you can see them coming through your paint, and as long as you're not erasing them, removing them, you're good. When you paint with the black over the orange, that black is going to overpower that orange very easily, and it won't be a problem. So sometimes when I need to, I'll switch and start using the skinny part of the brush, okay? So sometimes I'm using the broad part of the brush like this, like I am in this case, and from the area smaller than I switch, I switch it so that I'm using the skinny part of the brush. So I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Like I said, we are enjoying our vacation. Despite the fact that we had to make, make a change of plans, we are having a great time. Later on, we plan on going over to Fisherman's Wharf. Haven't been there in a long time, probably 14 years or so. So we're gonna go check that out. We were in Santa Barbara yesterday. And so the day before yesterday, we arrived in Santa Barbara, stayed there. Beautiful, beautiful city. Beautiful, beautiful city. Okay. And then uh, when we're headed back, we're planning on stopping by Monterey, going over to Monterey Bay, Cannery Row. We'll see. We're, we're kind of, it's not a really structured vacation, especially because it ended up being, you know, the last minute changes. But we're, we're just kind of playing it by ear, having a good time. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit more orange. I ran out of my mixture. In this case, because wings on these butterflies vary a little bit in, in color, they're not all perfectly uniform and the same color, it's, it's not a big deal if you have to remix paint and the shades don't exactly match. Okay, so for those of you that are looking for, you know, um, like I, when I when I did the background, I said, hey, you want to make sure you have enough paint so you, so you can cover your entire background without having to remix your color. It's not crucial on your butterfly. Your butterfly, at least the you know, monarch butterflies that I've seen for the most part, have a variation of color throughout their wings. So. Unless you're purposefully trying to create, you know, color that's completely uniform throughout, then yeah, then in that case, you want to make sure you you mix enough paint to be able to cover all, you know, every part of the orange bits on your butterfly's wings. All right. Okay, let me take a little step back, make sure I haven't missed anything. I got most of it. Okay, I'm going to grab my little number three for now, and I am going to dip it in a little bit of water. Don't need a lot for this, just a little tiny bit of water. And I'm just going to take a small section of my paint mixture here. 
dip my brush into that area only. Don't want to rub very hard so I don't get any of that paint or any of that plate dissolving into the paint. Just going to use this to outline some of these little areas that I couldn't get to with the other brush. Now my background is dry enough where I can put, put my finger on the surface. It helps stabilize my hand. There we go. Near missed a little bit. So about maybe another minute and a half on this orange for the wings, and then we're going to go ahead and start painting in the flower. The color for the flower is really close. You can make your butterfly and your flower exactly the same color. They're really, really close on my painting. It'll still work. Or if you want, you can make your flowers completely different. Now, this flower is a Mexican sunflower. Okay, that's the official uh, name for that. So, and they tend to be that really bright orange. Some of them tint a little bit yellow, and then others that I saw tint a little bit, a uh, little bit reddish. So, but you can make it whatever you want. Maybe yours is a daisy, or it's just a you know a really bright yellow sunflower, etc., etc., etc. It's your painting. Make it whatever you'd like. And again, just want to remind anybody that might be popping in here, the pre-prep, the drawing pre-prep video is available under the event, under the discussion tab on the event page. All right. Well, there we go. All right. Loretta Erdman from Indian, Indian River, Michigan. How's it going, Loretta? <clears throat> oh, wow. That's crazy, Amanda. So, Amanda, let me ask you, is that all because of COVID still? Are, are the cases of COVID over there getting more intense? Is that what's happening? Hopefully, you know, things clear up over there very quickly. You know, it's uh, pretty, you know, pretty sad to hear. I understand, though, if that's the case. That's, you know, every, every, every place is a little different. But hopefully things are going to clear up over there pretty soon. But anyway, all right, everybody. About 30 seconds and we move on to the next step. Now, I'm going to have to do another layer of orange in a little bit on my wings. So if that's the case with you, don't worry too much. Now, I'm blocking the new painting here for a moment to show you guys a close-up of the original here. We got some glitter. I got quite a bit of pearl glitter there that I'm, I, I have some here. I'll be adding some to the wings at the very end. And then I did add a little bit of glitter to some of the little butterflies in the background. You can see that there's a little bit of shine to them. Okay. Those, that will be added at the end for those of you that want to add. Good. What's happening, Penny? How are you? Are you uh, painting with us today, Penny, or are you just stopping by to say hello? Hopefully you get a chance to do a little painting. All right. So same little brush. I'm actually using my, going back to my small number three flat. Wow. Crazy, Amanda. All right. Well, hopefully things get better there soon. I know it's got to be really, really tough. So going back to my little number four flat brush, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a little bit of a little bit more yellow in this case for this layer on my flower. I'm going to take a little bit more yellow. Just going to grab this in the same color that I mixed for the butterfly. I'm just going to do this down here towards the bottom. So I'm going to have a an orange, an area that's more orange, and an area that's brighter down here. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, just a bit, dip it into my water cup, and then just lightly, I don't need to do it really hard, just lightly, okay, mix that in a little bit. Now my paint could be a little swirly, meaning that I could see a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow in there. All good, I'm just gonna take my brush. Now I'm gonna do these long brush strokes, following along, the path or the shape, the length of each petal. So, okay, so for example, right there, I can just kind of turn with the petal a little bit as I go down. Okay, kind of like that. Same up here. All 
I'm using my brush strokes to start creating some texture. Again, the paint that I'm using, this Blix acrylic paint is a little bit, a little bit thicker, a little bit fuller bodied than the normal paint that I use. So the thicker the paint you can usually, it's a little easier to create texture with. go and same thing as with my butterfly wings if I run out of a little bit of, if I run out of this paint I have to mix a little bit more not a big deal oh. what's happening Danielle But definitely, as Karen says, Amanda, hang in there. Hopefully you're taking lots of time to do stuff like this, paint, find, uh, you know, find things to enjoy. But definitely, we understand that it's gotta be, it's gotta be rough. Here I was kind of bummed out, right? Because we had to change our vacation plans at the very last minute. And, uh, you know, some people can't travel. So definitely it's all about perspective, right? And uh, again, hopefully things start clearing up over there for you as well. All right. So this is the first layer on our flower. Later on, we'll come back and add a little bit more in terms of other shades. Refine a little bit, little bit maybe add some reds. And this one's a lot brighter at the moment than that one is, but that's because later on I come in and, and add more oranges and reds to it. Okay. Ipsita, how's it going? Orlando, oh, it's Trisha from Orlando, Florida. How's it going, Trisha? Hi, Cheryl. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 easy to say, right? It's easy easy to say it'll pass, but definitely understand understand the frustration. But okay, everybody, go ahead and take a moment there. I'm gonna grab my I'm gonna grab my um, my little Gatorade here. Let's see, where am I? Where am I? Okay, I, I muted myself for a moment. Let's see, Wendy March says, hi, late starting but excited, catching up. Hey, Wendy, um, and any, this goes for anyone. If you jump on here a little bit late, if you go over to YouTube, okay, the YouTube on YouTube, you can always back up a live session. So let's say you jump on here on Facebook and you realize, oh my gosh, you know, this started already um, behind. If you go over to the YouTube channel, same name, Painting with Jesse, find the live session. You can back that up all the way to the beginning, okay? You can't do that on Facebook. You can only do that on, on, uh, on YouTube. Hi, Carol. Just checking in, huh? Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, Cheryl, got to find some time for that for that uh, art in your life, okay? That... that uh, that self care, that um, you know, uh, uh, what what are called therapy, art therapy is what it is. You definitely got to find some time for that. But uh, for sure, hopefully you get, you're you're able to come in and paint a little bit here pretty soon. All right, everyone, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. Okay, I've got I've run out here on my plate on my little palette, so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and um, just add some more to to the plate because we're going to paint the center of our flower a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is same brush, this little number four 
lat is getting quite a bit of use. So just going to grab this guy. Again, not, don't need to mix any water with my paint at the moment. Not for this step. Now, I'm using the corner here of my brush, a little tiny corner, okay? Or either corner. I just come in here. And again, because my paint is a little thick, this is uh, thicker body paint, I'm just going to come in here and leave it a little thick so it creates a little bit of texture. Okay, and I just kind of, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to dab. You have a more liquidy paint, a more flowy paint. This might be a little difficult to do, but give it a shot. See what you get. Don't stress out if it doesn't work out. It's all good. It'll still look nice when you're done. Okay, so there's that. Take a moment on that. In just a bit, we're going to start adding in the black outline. Uh, the black, you know, all this black on, a, on the butterfly, black on the inside of the body. That is coming next. Yeah, art therapy. That's right. Oh, fantastic, Wendy. Fantastic. Definitely, you know, uh, art, any art, not just painting, any art is very therapeutic. That is one thing that I've found to be true over and over and over and over and over. I don't know how many people I've helped uh, learn to paint over the years now. And probably the most common message that I get from newer painters, people that take it up for the first time. And then actually people that have been painting for a while. But the new people are surprised that it's so therapeutic. It can be very relaxing. Sure, painting can be a little frustrating, stressful, etc. But overall, in a general sense, it's therapeutic. It allows you to turn everything else off, focus on something for a few minutes, hours at a time, you know, and you're just getting lost in your painting. Doesn't matter your experience level, how good you are, etc. If you approach it in a particular way, you're gonna get a little bit of therapy from your painting. Okay, so. There's always that. What's up, Diana? But here we go. Let's change things up a little bit. Now I'm going to go over. I have this. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I've got this small round. This is the equivalent. It doesn't have a number on it, but it's equivalent to a number five, maybe number six round brush. Okay. Smaller, a little bit thicker than the two round brushes I showed earlier. I'm going to grab a little bit of my black. And again, this paint is pretty thick. I'm going to make small lines with it. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you so much. I'm going to take this black, bring it over to my mix plate. I'm going to take my brush, dip it into my water cup a little bit, right? And I introduce that water, mix it in nicely. It's going to, this is going to allow two things to happen. It's going to help the paint flow a little bit easier, a little more easily. And then it also allows me to make skinnier lines. It's easier to make skinnier lines. I got to be careful. I don't want to press too hard on that plate. Otherwise, we're going to get that, you know, we're going to start getting that paper plate to, to dissolve, and that's not what we want. So once I've added the water in, it, in here and I've mixed it, what I can do is I can spin my brush. It makes the point skinnier. This allows me to make really skinny lines. Now, I'm not going to come in here and do all the little skinny lines on the inside yet. Those are coming later, but what I am going to do is these lines, the bigger lines around the edges. Now I may have thinned out the paint a little bit too much because the black is now a little transparent when I apply it to my canvas, but that's okay, that can be fixed. Either I can fix it now by adding more paint to my mixture and thickening out the paint a little, the paint versus the water mixture, or I can leave it as is, paint around, and then I'll come back later and do a second layer of paint once this first one dries. Different ways to approach painting. And something like this is easily fixed. Okay, so again, going around. I'm using my non-painting hand here. You guys can't see it, but I put it on my table here. I put my painting hand right over the top, over the wrist. So I'm doing this. This hand, my hand touches the table. Painting hand over the top. Now I've stabilized my painting hand and I can come around and paint comfortably and more easily. Now up in here, I'm going to have some white dots later on, just like on the original here, those little white dots. 
And then even here, I'm going to have some black lines going through there. But I'm not too concerned about all those little details just, just yet. Right now, it's the big areas of, uh, of the painting, of the black parts of the painting. Okay, so just transferring over a little more paint, a little bit more water. Being careful not to rub too hard. And here we go. Let's continue. You're new to acrylic painting. First layers tend to be a little bit uneven, a little bit blotchy even. That's all fixed with the second coat. If you're seeing unevenness in your painting, blotchiness, don't stress about that for now. Put your paint layer down, move on, continue spreading that paint around. And then um, a second, sometimes you require a third layer, but second or third layer will fix, will make your paint more even. It'll make it less blotchy, etc., etc. Sometimes I forget to mention that. And whether somebody's painting in person with me or painting, uh, you know, on one of these live sessions, they'll get stuck trying to make the paint all nice and even on that first layer. And they're sitting there and they're, uh, and they're moving that paint around, moving that paint around. And all they're doing is making one side a little bit darker, another side lighter. They keep going back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, the lower uh, the lower coats of coat of paint on that first paint underneath will start to dry, and the top layer is still a little bit wet. So, right, so there's a layer of paint in here. If I sit there, keep playing with this over and over again, a little bit is going to start to dry. And some of it's going to be a little bit wet. What that what that starts to do is you really start cre uh, creating some blotchiness. You actually remove some of the paint from the canvas, and uh, it can be a little frustrating when you're not familiar with the process. So don't worry too much about making it super intense or even on this first layer. Put your paint layer down, move on, and then we'll come back and fix the blotchiness later. Oh, around. So now I'm going to take this and we're going to bring it to the inside, right along the body. Now, if you don't have any of the brushes that I've got here, don't worry about it. You do what you got. Having the right brushes makes a big difference. So if you're newer to painting and you don't have a big assortment, you don't need it. You just need to have. Some good brushes, good quality brushes, and that doesn't mean super expensive or anything like that. It just means good quality brushes that aren't gonna, aren't gonna shed on you. You don't want them shedding while you're painting. And then um, you want uh, brushes that are gonna help you do the job a little bit more easily. Now back here, my torso on this butterfly is a little longer than the one on the original, right? You don't see it sticking out over here, but you do right here. I can fix that. I can either clean it up. I can leave it as is and go with it, or I can clean it. One way to clean, because that paint is still wet, I can take a paper towel here. Just let me grab a little piece of it. Don't need a lot. Going to take a, I'm going to dip this in some of my water cup. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to lightly dab it. The problem with this is that sometimes you'll also remove the background color, which can be a little bit problematic, but in this case, it's no big deal. Well, we'll come back later and add more paint to the top of that. Something just made a noise inside the inside my hotel room. Like it sounded like a fax machine or a printer. And I don't have any of that in here. But okay. All right, so now I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch to my my little number zero brush, little zero round brush, and I'm just going to go in there and refine some of those edges. Just going to clean these up areas like this where I can still see some of that white of the canvas peeking through. Remember those little skinny lines? I'm not doing anything with those yet. The ones on the inside, those are coming after I do my second layer of orange paint. But the edges, let's clean those up. Okay. 
areas like this. I'll probably be painting for about an hour and 45 minutes, maybe two hours total today. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. There we go. For now, we're good with that. You guys have about a minute to finish that up. All right. So I've got a really cool view. I'm in I'm in uh, downtown San Francisco off of Post Street. And the last time I was in San, San Francisco, I stayed on the same street. Not the same hotel, but the same street. Got a nice little view. About six floors up, nothing too crazy. But uh, yeah, it's kind of it's, it's a pretty day. It was a little bit a um, little bit wet last time when we rolled in. It was uh, a little bit of a mist, slight mist. Or spring, even sprinkling a tiny bit. Today supposedly is going to be uh, cooler, but it feels like it's warming up. But all right, everybody. 30 seconds and we're moving on. If you guys are new to the page, please don't forget to like and follow the page. Also, please send me pictures of your paintings. When you're all done, send me pictures of your paintings. Uh, you can send it to me. If you're on YouTube, you can send them to me via email, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. If you're on Facebook, please send them, send them to me via Messenger. Okay, send them to me over Messenger. Uh, that way, what I do is I'll accumulate a whole bunch of them or as many of them as I get, and then I'll make a giant post um, where I share them with everyone and other people get to see everyone else's handiwork. I put a layer of paper towels all over the floor here. I don't want to get any paint on the carpet. Just making sure that it's all still in the same spot. But all right, everyone, let's continue here. What I'm going to do right now is I am going to take a moment and paint a second layer on my background. Okay? Yeah, I saw that, Kathy, where, where I live. they having a heat wave right now. 107, 111, 105 over the week. So I'm kind of glad I'm over here in San Francisco. It doesn't look like San Francisco now that way. I think I saw 70s and maybe 80s was the, the hottest this week. Maybe what I'll do, once it starts, I'll stay here until it starts getting really hot. And then maybe it's getting cooler over there. I'll, move, I'll go back at that point, right? And I'll switch back. No, I'm kidding. That wouldn't work. I'm sure it's going to be hot the same places at the same time. At some point during the summer, at both places. But all right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take um, more blue, right? More of my blue. Actually, no, I have plenty of blue on my plate. I'm going to take some more white. Today, I'm a little bit more organized with my paint than I often am. For those of you that follow me on my uh, Painting with Jesse page, you guys know that sometimes I, I can be a pretty messy painter. It's just my style. I can be a pretty messy painter. I try to keep organized with my colors, like my, here's my paint palette, right? I try to keep everything organized there. But oftentimes, all of my paints, plates, my mixed plates, my paint palette, end up getting really messy towards the end. I'm going to try to be a little better with that, especially when I'm teaching. It just makes it easier for you guys all to follow along. But all right, scooping up that white, bringing it over. Now, I don't want to, I'm going to switch plates here because that area right there slides off of the bunch of that dissolved paper and I don't want to contend with that. So I'm bringing it over to my plate. I'm going to grab a bunch of the blue, bring it over also. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Now I'm going to mix the two. Remember, we want to make sure we mix enough, right, to cover all of that background so we don't have to mix part way through. It's okay to have a different shade on the second layer like we're doing right now. So this shade doesn't have to be exactly like the original shade. It could be lighter, it could be darker, and you could be purposeful about changing the color if you want. If it was too dark, the first layer is too dark or too light. On the second layer, you can mix it 
so that you make your color correction out whichever direction you want. But the key is whatever you do, you want to mix enough to be able to cover the entire background. Unless you're purposefully going for a different shade, maybe you want it darker over here, right? Or you want it, maybe it's brighter up here and darker as it goes down. Who knows? But if that's the case, and then that's a little bit of a different path, right? But if you are trying to cover or have a uniform color throughout, you want to mix plenty on your first, uh, on uh, your batch. Okay, all right, there we go. Okay. Once again, what do we do? We're going to outline things first a little bit so that we, it's just easier to paint around our butterfly. And then if you're new to the page, just remember, this is all being recorded. If you don't get a chance to complete your painting with me today, maybe you're, you have to leave partway through, you can go back and watch the recorded session either on Facebook or on YouTube. As soon as the live session's over, I just, I save everything. You don't have to hit it. You don't have to hit save on the platform that I use to record this stuff, to live stream this stuff. It automatically saves it. I used to have to hit record or save. Now I don't have to. As soon as it's over, it just automatically saves it. If I want to re or remove it, I have to go in there and manually remove it. So anyhow, painting will be available for you to go back and watch it at your leisure. All right, here we go. I outlined my butterfly. Again, little short brush strokes. Now, my paint can be a little bit streaky, meaning I can have a variation of color in here. I don't have to make a, make a completely perfect even blend in here. That kind of adds a cool effect if you leave it so it's a little bit streaky. It's entirely up to you. If you're looking for that uniformity. If it's all, just make sure it's all streaky, right? Or, or mostly streaky so you can take this paint and spread it everywhere on your background. Short brush strokes, different directions. I'm already liking my background quite a bit more. It was a little washed out on that first layer. Let me bring this up a bit, sit it over the edge of the easel so I can Now on this next step, once I'm done with this painting the front part of the canvas, I am going to take some paint and paint around the edges. I'm painting on a canvas. And I usually paint my sides, the sides of the canvas. I'll do that here in just a moment. Always want to take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance, make sure that, you know you're not. Sometimes when you're a little too close, you develop a bit of a tunnel vision. And you'll, you'll miss things. By taking a step back, it's easier to... Now here, I accidentally added a little bit of blue on my butterfly wing on the edge here. That's okay. That's easily fixed with black. Lucky, luckily, I didn't take much of the blue into the orange. That can be a little tougher to fix. So now, again, I'm just going to go through here. And do, I'm going to make this paint a little bit more washed out. It's, it's on the edges, so it's not crucial. So top edge. The right edge. Now, I've mentioned this a few times now over the past three or four videos that I've done, maybe past three. I am starting a painting membership. The Facebook and a Facebook private group component. And it's going to have a website component to it. You'll be able to access for the, for the members, people that sign up for the membership, you'll be able to access uh, both the Facebook private group and the website. 
bunch of fun stuff that we'll be doing there around painting. Basically creating a, a more involved painting community over what I've created over the past year or so. More uh, technical trainings. Nothing too crazy where people, you know, where it's super hard or difficult. You want to keep the fun in, in painting. But uh, keep your eyes out because I'm I'm still working on it. I don't have all the details yet. But definitely, if you're interested in something like that, Q&As, uh, painting over Zoom, more exclusive events, uh, drawing videos, short 30-minute drawing sessions or, or something like that. It's going to have a kids and family component, and then it's going to have an adult component. Like this is this is more adult things, right? More complex. So again, still working on the details. I can't really talk too much about it because I don't have a whole lot of particulars. But if you are interested in something like that, keep your eyes peeled. But all right, much better. I like that. The background's nice and even, a lot more even than uh, than what it was before that first step. I don't do the bottom edge of my canvas. I don't do that bottom edge because it's on a on an easel. Uh, it will, if I paint it now and I leave it there, it could glue itself to the to the easel and, could, and sometimes it's hard to peel off. I've had some canvases that actually tear when you peel them off, you tear some of that side off and we don't want to do that. So take about 30 seconds, maybe a minute and we'll continue. Thank you, Tina. Absolutely, my pleasure. And no worries that you're late. You know how it works. Or at least I think you might know how it works. You might've heard me mention it. If you start a little bit late, you can always go over to YouTube, catch the live on YouTube right now. You can back it up all the way to the beginning and start from there, okay? What's happening, Gloria Marie? How are you? Hopefully everything's awesome out in Florida. Thank you for ju uh, jumping in and painting along with us today. At least I think you're painting with us today, right? Yeah, these are really vibrant, very nice colors. Felt like I was catching a cold a few days ago. A couple of days ago, actually, when I when I did the pre prep video. Next day or so, I was like, just a really mild one, but still finding a little tiny bit of a of the sniffles. Always a bummer when you go on vacation, right? And, and you know you don't want to be sick on your vacation. Luckily, it wasn't anything too too crazy. But all right. So, what is the next step? We are going to come in here and add that second layer of orange to the inside of the butterfly. So let me go back to my little flat brush that I've been working with. Okay. Now I'm going to take this orange, a little bit of yellow. I can scoop them up together. Why not? Just going to mix them on my plate anyway. So bring them over. I've already got this. So this is all, all dry in there. I can. Mix right over the top. A little bit of water. A little tiny bit of water. Okay. And here we go. Now, if you're able to, if you were painting along here and you're brushing over your pencil lines and you can see them through that first layer of paint, be careful because adding the second layer of paint, if you add that second layer over your pencil lines as well, you might start to block them. As long as you can see them a little bit, you'll be okay. All right, lighting this deeper orange color already. Again, your painting is a little blotchy. Second and third layers of paint will fix that. That's exactly what's happening right now. The blotchiness of that first layer is disappearing with the second layer. Go. So you guys might be noticing that I'm going right over my pencil lines. I can still see them. So 
contrary to what I started doing at the very beginning, where I was kind of avoiding them, I'm also not smearing them. So we're good. So I mentioned at the beginning that I'm about 10 minutes away from a Blix store. So where I live in Southern California, like the closest Blix art supply, for those of you that may not know what Blix is, it's a really big art supply store. It's like a, the one in San Diego is like two, maybe, I think it's two stories. But it's, it's large. It's like a giant art store with all kinds of different supplies, right? Almost anything you can think of is in there. Well, they've got a I think the second closest one to me is the one here in San Francisco. So, so made a little trip there this morning. I was like a little kid in a candy store. Felt like uh, Charlie when he went to the chocolate factory, <laughs> walking around with me and everything. I just went to go get some paint. I needed. I needed. I knew I was going to stop. Originally, the plan was that was that I was going to get my paint down in San Miguel, San Miguel de Allende. But like I mentioned that. Didn't turn out. I had to change plans very last minute. For you guys that may not have heard the story at the beginning, so the plan was that I was going to be in Mexico for a few days on vacation. Well, we were at the airport, everything was good, good to go. Chaotic though, it was definitely chaotic to get to the point where you know you're gonna board and everything, but through uh miscommunication, I'll call it, with our host. The Airbnbs that we had originally booked, things didn't weren't going to work out. Not on the dates that we needed, and we scrambled trying to fix things last minute, and it just wasn't going to happen. So we decided, all right, we'll change plans. We'll change that trip to a different day, and we'll uh, come up to coast, California coast. Anyway, so the plan was I was going to buy some supplies down there. Just so happens that. Blix is right around here. So I'm just taking a moment really quick to fix this black part of the butterfly down here where I mentioned that. I added some blue paint by accident. There we go. All right. Yes, Amanda, it is humongous. Uh, it's, it's, I was, I was, uh, Oh, Penny, yeah, that's what happened, uh, Penny. Things are, are you know, I, I we, we had to scrap plans at the very last minute, unfortunately. We were at the airport, and we got a communication from our Airbnb host. Apparent, we had been trying to get a hold of her for a couple of days. We thought everything was fine, just wasn't getting back to us. We, we had this thing planned for over, oh, we originally planned it, before COVID last year, our trip to Mexico, COVID hit, scrapped everything, couldn't couldn't go. And then we started planning it again about three months ago. Thought everything everything was in order. Found out last minute we had to make different arrangements for our you know where we were, we were going to stay, and that just became really crazy. And I'm talking last minute before we boarded the plane. So decided to scrap that. <clears throat> Luckily, we had flight insurance and all this other stuff, and uh, everything was. We just ended up coming up to coast instead. So, we're in. Uh, we were in Santa Barbara the day before yesterday and yesterday. Left there yesterday. Drove up. We're in San Francisco now. So, changed plans. We're still on vacation, having a good time, but it wasn't the original plan. <clears throat> Definitely bumped, bumped about it, but we'll 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 be there again. We'll we'll be there, hopefully by the end of summer. <clears throat> Okay, everyone, here we go. What's the next step? Well, we're going to add a little bit of paint, a little more paint, another layer to the flower. So you guys are joining me for my, I'm in my hotel room. And uh, you guys see the background. The area behind me looks like I took a bunch of paint and, you know, splattered it all over that back wall. It just so happens that this room has that as the background. Pretty crazy. 
just coincidence. It was meant to be is what it is. <laughs> All right, just mixing a little bit of this yellow-orange for my flower. And again, your yellow-orange color, your color for your flower can be identical to the flower, the color of the butterfly. Up to you. I'm going to make mine a little bit lighter for now. A little bit. Let me get in front of here. Blocking the camera for a moment. Uh, I dropped my yellow paint. But I'm going to um, I'm going to add some red accents, some orange accents here in just a bit. I'm going to start with a little swirly orange. A little bit. Now I can take a, just taking a touch of my red and mixing it in. I want it swirly, though. I want to be able to see a little bit of all the colors, yellow, orange, and some red. And I'm going to take this. Now I'm using just the skinny part of my brush. I'm just going to make cross. Just making these little streaky lines. I don't have to cover every bit of every part of every petal. I can even avoid, purposefully avoid some areas to make some of that original lighter color kind of come through. I think I said I was going to do a light, a lighter shade when I was first talking about this layer. I meant I'm going to make a little bit of a swirly layer with and let some of that color underneath pop through. But again, by using these long brush strokes, making everything flow in the direction of your flower, of your petals, to you create a little bit of texture. And by leaving these little subtle areas untouched, that also helps create texture and gives your flower, your colors for the petals a little bit more variation. Okay. Yeah, it does. It sure does. Looks like a Jackson Pollock thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Little drip action. Yeah. We had no idea we were going to, you know, we walked in and it was like that. And we're like, what? How strange. All right. There we go. I'm going to start speeding things up a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow now, add some to my paint palette, go back to my little brush here, the one that the same brush I've been using before, flat. Okay, just going to scoop up, just going to stick with one of the corners here, some of this yellow, and just going to dab it around little butterfly's head. All the way around, just like that. Hey. Okay. Take my little brush, my little, either my number three round or my zero round, and just gonna scoop up a little bit of yellow. I've got some areas in here that I need to make sure I get some, some of this yellow paint into. There we go. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much. Sounds good, Tina. Yeah, those little flowers are little, little butterflies, not flowers. Little butterflies are a little tricky. Now check those out. They're really subtle, right? They're just have little detail to them. Well, not all of them. Some of them are just little tiny blotches, right? Like this, for example, like that. I know you guys can see this little drawing in here when I, I drew one of them in and I forgot to paint it, but no big deal. We don't have to do any drawing. We can do this all without any paint. I was just experimenting when I did that one. Okay. But all right. 
So 30 seconds, we move on to that next step. And that next step is going to be continuing with a black around the uh, around the edges of the butterfly wing, and then also coming in and adding adding going ahead and outlining those pencil lines. So I'm going to start with my flat. Oh, sorry, my round, my my small round. I need to bring some more black. Add some more black to my plate. Somebody mentioned allergies earlier, so we made a comment about allergies. And it, you know, I guess it could be allergies. My throat was a little scratchy and stuff. It was a little a few days ago when I thought I was getting, well, it felt like I was fighting a cold. My throat was a little bit scratchy too, so and sore, a little sore. So that could have also indicated a cold. But yeah, I guess it could also be the allergies. But all right, here we go. A little bit of black paint. I just brought it over to my uh, mix plate. Added a little bit of water. Don't need a whole bunch, right? A little bit. Don't want to get that plate underneath to start dissolving. But I'm going to come in. The first time we add a second layer over the top of this first layer and clean up my edges a little. Right away, the transparent nature of that first layer of paint, the blotchiness that I had is disappearing with this second layer. Much more intense, cleaner. Sounds good, Anisa, Anita, and Vaughn. Sounds fantastic. Always good to watch. First time around, kind of get get a feel for what's happening. Get a you know good look at the approach. Whoops, got a little distracted and went past my edge there. No big deal. Just gonna take a look at my paper towel here. Dip in my water cup. Just take a little bit of water here, and then lightly touch that so it removes that paint. Nice and light touch. But anyway, yeah, it's all often a good idea to. I notice a lot of people like to do that. They'll come on and watch the uh, session or parts of it, and they get an idea, formulate the idea, right, or process it, and then come back and paint with the recorded session. I think live sessions are more fun. You get to interact a little, but probably easier with the recorded session for most. All right, there we go. Now, body. There we go. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to switch to my zero, my little zero brush. I'm going to make some skinny lines with this. So remember from earlier, I spin my brush in my plate like this, making that edge or the point really small. Now this brush here is a little bit, I've, I've bent the bristles a bit. It's an older brush. I've been using it for a long time. And that will happen. It can happen over time. So got to be careful. I use my finger here, place it right on the, the canvas. It supports Support my painting hand, and I'm just going to come in here. Now it's the added water in the paint that's allowing me to make these smaller lines. So I'm just going to come in here and fix this a little bit, change the shape of that. And then, actually, before I even go there, I'm just going to go through and start outlining all of these little skin, these small lines in here. 
if you're struggling at all to get skinny lines or to get your paint to flow onto the, onto the canvas like this, you want to add as easily as this, like this. You want to add a little bit of water to your paint. It's always a sign. You need a little bit of water in there. How's it going, Joe? Are the tricks those little skin lines that make sure you add enough water, not too much, so the right amount of water, I should say. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just gonna start making little adjustments to some of what I've got on here. For example, the thickness of this line that's going across. They're a little thin, thin on this one in comparison to that, and that'll work. That's okay. If I leave them like that, it's okay. But I want to just increase this a little bit on both edges or both sides of both wings okay maybe in here maybe this line gets a little thicker Here, this edge right here. Do the same thing over here. Here. So I'm making little refinements to the outer, that black outer edge. Over here too, I'm gonna make this a little thicker. Thank you, Anita. All right. So up in here in this section, which that so this right here is this little corner here, right? Same thing over here. We have these little lines, these little uh, circular orange patterns that I didn't I, I did not account for in the drawing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and add them now. And I do this, there's three of them. One, two, three. So there's one, two, three by adding two black lines. So here's one. Here's one goes like this, one, okay? And then here's another, two, okay? Same thing on the other side. I've got this area, I'm gonna add two lines. One, and then two, actually this one's gonna take three. We're gonna take three lines because this edge over here 
is missing right there. Okay, and then we can go and refine these a bit. Just kind of go through and make them a little, a little, a little softer. The edges a little softer here as well. So I'll, there's a lot of point, a lot of corners, sharp corners in there. Just going through and softening, softening them up a little bit. We're going to take a little step back. I'll look at my painting from a distance. Remember, always take a little step back. It's easier to see uh, where you have to make changes, right where you want to make little adjustments. So take a little step back. This little edge right here, I can clean it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, where else? These lines all down in here need to have a, need to be a little bit darker. So let me go ahead and they're dry enough where I can add another layer over the top, make everything a lot more intense. Cleaner, stand out a bit more. All right. Okay. Take a little bit on that. You guys work on that for just a moment. What's happening, Alicia from Kentucky? Work on that for just a little bit. I have to find a way to bring power up to my phone before it's before it gets a little too low. Give a moment. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Now, one second, let me do a quick check on my power here. All right, I think I, I got to pick things up a little bit. Um, let's see, because my phone is running a little low on power, and my power cord won't be long enough to reach all the way over here. So I'll, I'll see what we can do right in just a moment. But anyway. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> if we happen to start to run out of power, I might have to figure something else out, but I think we're going to be okay. Now, here we go. Let's go and we're, we're going to pick things up a little bit. Let's work on the stem in here. Okay, the green stem. I'm going to grab my, but I have no charge. Normally, when I'm in my studio, I, um, I uh, you know, have everything set up where it's constantly getting power. So, I'm just going to grab some of my green here. Oops, there we go. Just have some green right on my plate. Gonna bring that over. Put on my plate over here. And then right in here. Actually, I'm gonna bring my stem. Let's see, I'll bring it down this way a bit. Change the angle just a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, something like that. Okay, probably made it a little thicker than what I want, but that's okay. What's happening, Anna? But I'm okay with that. Actually, sunflowers, these sunflowers, as I noticed, have a pretty thick stem on them. So I think that I think that works. We'll be okay right there. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding a bunch of the little butterflies. Okay, and I'm going to start with a bunch of just, just a bunch of little almost dots. I'm going to use my number three round brush for that. Okay. So what I'll do. Now I want to introduce, I want to make sure that this, what I add to the uh, canvas on this next, on these next few steps is kind of transparent. So I thin out my paint by adding a little bit of water to it. Okay. Taking my paint, adding water to it. I've got this old mixture from the flowers. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I start to dab uh, the canvas. Now, my butterflies are all going in this direction, and the ones, little tiny ones off in the distance, so you can barely see like what I'm adding now. Let me give you guys a close up. Don't have a lot of detail. Okay. They're just little, almost little dots. Okay. There's not a whole lot of detail in these just yet. It's the ones that are a little bit bigger, they're going to get some detail. These are the ones that are way off in the distance. Okay, so so I work kind of quickly here. Let's add some of those over here. You know what I'm going to do? Let's see here. I'm going to. Oh, I can't. I'm going to start using my. I was going to use my computer to power my laptop, or sorry, my laptop to power my phone, but I don't have the right cord for that. So this is, I'm still thinking, just thinking here, I can do this just in case I don't want to start to run out of power here. There's still ways off, but I want to make sure it doesn't happen. So now I'm coming through and I'm going to start making some bigger ones here in just a moment. First, though, I cover my canvas and these little tiny ones. Now, some of these bigger ones, like this one, they're triangular in shape, okay? A triangle, little heads over here, okay? And then, or, or almost like a kite. So let's say we have one right here, and I'll give you a close-up in a moment. I'm just going to draw. The, again, the water is important because it makes my paint transparent, and that's what I want. So there's one right there, okay? Sounds good, Don. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to make uh, maybe another little triangle, triangular one over here. One like this one. Let me show you a close-up of that. It's triangular in shape. I don't worry about the little black parts there. Those will come later. Triangular in shape. The little wings have little curved edges on them. So that is something like, so let's say we're drawing one of those right here. Goes up. Okay. And then wing. There's not a whole lot to these. Okay, look at that. Not a whole lot to them. They're just... Little shapes that when we add the touches of detail in black, it makes them look like butterflies from a distance. So there's another little triangular one. We'll add the, maybe we'll add it over here. Again, nothing fancy here. That one's more open. The wings are a little more open. So... Start with something like that.
right? Maybe a little bigger, a little bit of a bigger one over here. One second, everyone. I'm going to try something here. Thank you, Pam Mitch. Sounds good. Come on back with the record and finish off with the recorded session for sure. So you're going to make as many of these as you want. Right? As many of these as you want. For each of, each of you, your, you know, your painting is filled with a whole bunch of these or just a few of these. Maybe your painting doesn't have any of these little butterflies off that are, you know, in that background. What I'm going to, to do now, though, is I'm going to give them a little bit of detail. Switching over to my number three, or my little zero round brush, I'm going to take a little bit of black. Okay, a little bit of black. And, again, I want to wash it out. I want to thin it out. So, a little bit of water. And what I'll do is my butterflies will have like a a little bit of a dot toward the head, where the head is. Something like this. Okay. Now I can make like little lines in. There's one over the top, one over the bottom. Something like that. Okay. Let's see this one. Dot and then line down the middle. Okay, maybe at the top. All you're doing is slightly adding some touches of black. So it kind of looks like, you know, you've got some detail in some of those wings. Josephina, fantastic. And I apologize if it sounds like I'm going a little bit faster. I am. I'm, I'm getting concerned that we're going to run out of uh, juice here. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do to. I just need to get an extension over if I can find one in this room. I didn't anticipate my power would be running so down so quickly on my phone. So just add little touches of <clears throat> black. Imagine where the head is. For example, we got this one right here. I just put a little, and then the body goes down here. Maybe on the top of the wing, got a little bit of color around that edge. You're not looking for a lot of detail. You're just doing a little bit at a time so that you can make it look like you've got a bunch of these butterflies off in the distance. The trick is that the paint is washed out so that they look like they're far away. If there's too much color in there, if the color's too intense, you're going to lose. It's going to make them look too defined. These are way back in the distance, way back, right? So they're going to be almost even a little bit transparent, washed out. No worries, Aaron. Uh, the session's being recorded, and you can always come back and um, paint with that with a recorded session later. Now, here's what I'll do, folks. If we happen to run out of power. You know, partway through, I got to tell you, hey, folks, I got to log off because the phone's about to die. What I'll do is I'll complete the session. <clears throat> uh, you know, I'll record the completed session. So it'll be a two part, okay, two parter. If that's what ends up, we end up having to do that. And you'll find it here both on, paint, on Painting with Jesse, uh, Facebook, and on the YouTube channel. If that's what ends up happening, if I can't figure out how to connect. Or find a long enough cord to connect to my phone here. Looked like I was at about 15% a few moments ago. So, okay. So, just going through and touching up, not every single one of these gets a, a little bit of black in it. Some of them are too far away and they look almost like little tiny orange dots. 
So this is all I've done so far. Look at all those flowers, those butterflies off in the distance, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Add as many of those as you'd like. Little variations of these on your end to speed up the process a bit, to not get too caught up in these. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the, um, yeah, we are at 10%. I'm going to start talking about the little white dots, okay, the antenna, and some of the details in the flower. But we got to speed things up a little bit, unfortunately. Um, but in here, the little dots that are all in white, I'm going to switch over to my number three brush. Okay, I'm going to take some more white paint, just putting it over on my palette. If your paint isn't thick, you want to mix some a little bit of water with it. Mine's actually, it's thick, but not so thick that I can't, that I need to add water to this part. All I'm going to do is add little tiny dots. And these go all the way along the wings. And they tend to be bigger up here in the corners. Smaller on the edges. So down here, these little small ones, I'm doubling them up along the wing. So there's two of them together. Okay. And then we're going to work these all the way around on each side. So work on that for a moment while I try to figure things out over here. Seeing if I can prolong our session or not, not interrupt it. Um, let's see. What can we do? Ah. I think I might have figured it out. Maybe. Ah. You guys need to see me destroy my uh, my hotel. <laughs> but I might have figured it out. This guy moves. Ah, yes. And then I can plug this in over there. Bear with me a little bit, folks. Bear with me a little bit. I think I found the solution. Keep painting, keep making your little your lines there. Or your dots. Keep making your dot. Okay. All right. Almost there, almost there. Okay. I think I figured this out, folks. I think I figured it out. Yeah. Where'd my charger go? And my charger a moment ago. There you are. Tell you in a moment if this worked. That wall unit, what I thought was a wall unit, is I was able to pull it away from the wall. It actually has an extension cord that runs all along the it's long enough to run all the way back to the power cord bench or outlet, and that should, yes, that did it. <laughs> Woo! 
Okay, that did it, everyone. Very cool. So anyway, back to our little dots. Now I don't have to rush as much. So I'm just doubling up on these, making these, both, putting these all the way around. Edges here of our wing. Just taking my little number zero brush. I can spin it again. If I need to make that point smaller, I'm spinning it and making those little, it allows me to make the point smaller and, and then that make, allows me to make my dots quite a bit smaller. So again, all the way around. If your white, if your little dots are too transparent, don't worry about it too much. You just come back later once they're dry and you add another layer over the top and that makes them a lot more intense, okay? Okay, no worries, no worries. Okay. Like I said, the session's being recorded so you can come back and uh, work with the recorded session which will be available immediately afterwards. All right. Let's continue with our little circles. Right here. If you're... If you're on YouTube or if you go find the recorded session on you or the live session on YouTube, you can back it up. You can back up the live session right now and start from the beginning. Okay. Otherwise, you just wait till the record till this is over and then the and then paint with a recorded session. Okay. No problem. All right. So there's my little dots all the way around. Okay. Again, if the, if your white dots are a little transparent, don't worry. Let them dry a bit, then come back and paint over them. Another layer of white. Now I've got these little dots on our. I noticed when I was looking at monarch butterflies, they have these little white dots on their actual heads. So I'm going to take a moment to come over here and add little white dots over here. Okay. I'm also, I'm actually going to take a little bit of black with this and make the head a little bit whiter. There. Probably made it a little too wide, but that's all right. It'll still work. Take a little step back here. Ah, a little too wide, a little too wide. So let me remove some of that paint. A little bit. There we go. I like that better. Okay. Little zero brush. Okay, before I'm gonna use this here in just a bit to make the antenna. To add those little those antenna. Okay, but before I do that, I'm gonna come and add more detail 
to the flower. Okay, one more step right before that. I'm going to go over to my number three. Okay, my number three brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of this black. Okay, I'm on my mix plate right now, right? And then I'm going to take a little tiny touch of white. Okay, like this. I'm making a really, just a slight variation of this black. Rather, it's a really dark gray. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of water. Dip, in, dip my brush in my water cup. And now what I'm going to do is here on the tail, on the back part of our, our butterfly, what I noticed is a lot of them had almost like an iridescent color. So it wasn't entirely just black all the way through. A little bit of an iridescent color that made them look a little bit gray here on the body. And more of a really dark black. Okay, something like that. Now, while all of this in here is drying a bit, I'm going to go, and go ahead and add more detail to the inside of the flower. I'm going to take the same brush, my number three brush, okay, tip in my water cup, clean it up a little. I'm going to take some red. I'm going to bring that over. Okay, scooping up some of this red. I'm going to bring it over to my plate here. I'm also going to take a little bit of yellow. Mix the two together just a little bit. Some water is still in my brush, so it makes it easier for the two colors to blend a bit. Now I'm just going to take this and add some detail to my petals. Just going through there. Adding some of these little touches, little streaks. Okay, now I'm going to take I'm going to switch brushes back to my number four flat brush and grab a little bit of orange. I already got it here on my, my plate. Just going to scoop it up like this. And I'm going to come in here. Don't forget, folks, send me pictures of your paintings. Okay, you can send them to me on Messenger here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Or if you're on YouTube, send them to me via paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Once I get a little batch of those or a big batch of those, I'd like to share them on my Facebook page. Remember, take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance. What does it look like? Maybe you need to have some refinements, changes, slight adjustments. Okay? Always take a little step back, look at your painting from a distance, and decide, you know, if you, uh, if you like what you've got. Sometimes when you're a little too close, you develop a tunnel vision, and it's hard to see all the details. Um, 
like you can from a distance. Okay, so always take a little step back, look at your piece from a from a bit of a ways, and uh, yeah, make little adjustments if you need to. Okay, I am going to take a little bit of orange. I'm going to use my one of my small brushes. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to grab a little bit of orange. I'm putting it right there, pointing the bristles. I'm just going to come in here, start dabbing little dots here. So that looks kind of like this. Little dots in there. Then I'm also going to do the same thing, but with the set with yellow. So same brush, I just clean it a little. I'm going to grab some yellow. Okay, right on the right on the tip there. And then I'm going to come over and Bringing those around the edges. A little fire siren. Sounds like a fire truck in the background. Now these little dots that I'm adding are a little thick. Okay. So let me see if we can catch that. Okay. And then I'm also going to take a little bit of this yellow. And I'm just going to add a few little accents. Up here. Okay. All right, take a moment on that. Okay. Take a moment on that. Look at your flower, look at your butterfly. The the next step, actually, before I do the antenna, is I'm going to go through and uh, add a little bit of glitter. We're almost done here. We're going to add a little glitter to the butterfly. Okay, but uh, make sure you take a little step, look at your, you know, <coughs> look at your flower from a distance as well. You know, look at all the little details, et cetera. Make changes if you need to. Make little adjustments. And then we will add some glitter here in just a bit. I'm going to do the same here. Take a little step back. One thing I can do is add a little bit more white to the dots. So I'm going to go and do that now. White dots on those wings. Actually, up in here. I don't quite like how this turned out, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to cover that in black and go over it again in some white here. Just first, I'm going to cover it up with black, let it sit for a moment while I work on some of the other stuff, and then I'll come back with my white dots and go over that. Okay, but what I am going to do is just refine some of these dots on the edges. Adding the second layer of paint makes them stand out quite a bit more from that orange background and that black background. Now, all of these dots don't have to be super bright, I noticed. I noticed when I was looking at all these different butterfly pictures that some of them are kind of gray. So these dots actually turned a little bit gray. Now, I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of this white paint to the fresh paint 
on the head. We'll see how this works. Okay, much better. Much better. Okay, so let me show you guys a closer begin of the original. Got lots of glitter paint on here. Now, I could go back and add more butterflies to the background, right? Because these I don't have as many butterflies on this one as I do on that one. So I could do that, but you guys like got all got the uh, steps on how to create that for yours. So it's up to you if you you know if you want to go back over that and add more. I'm gonna leave mine as is. I'm just gonna go right into that glitter. So I've got this pearl color glitter. Uh, it's called Glitterific. It's made by Folk Art. I believe it's Folk Art. That's right. It is. I'm just going to scoop it up right out of the bottle using, I've got, a, I've got an, uh clean brush over here that I haven't used yet. Just a little extra brush. I'm just going to scoop this right up. Okay. And the way we do this, come right over the top. You want to avoid adding this to any areas that are that are still wet. So add it only to areas that are that are uh, that are dry. Okay, so that you don't get that paint mixing with the glitter. It will dull it. Won't be as bright or as nice. Now, if you have orange or, or yellow glitter, this is obviously glitter floating around in a, like a glue. Gold, orange, red, all those could work. But this makes a really nice difference. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention, folks? Um, I'm sure many of you already know. You saw my post from yesterday or the day before. Had a hack, uh, not a hacker, they're not hackers. If you don't actually get into my account, it's imposters. People post a personal page. But somebody who has a personal page, they'll change the name to match somebody else's page or something really close. So, for example, painting with Jesse, but they'll combine painting and the word with. And maybe they'll add us an extra E at the end of Jesse, right? So somebody did that. It's a third time, third imposter page over the past few months. Somebody did that. And then what they'll do is they'll turn around and start sending messages. Oh, they'll 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 share my pictures. They'll they'll steal like my profile page picture and they'll use it as their profile picture. And then they'll share my posts. They're able to go on my Facebook page. And share my posts, and then what they'll, they'll do is they'll send messages to the followers of this page. They'll send them friend requests. Okay, so be careful. All these are scammers trying to fool you into thinking that it's me sending out friend requests. Okay, so just want to make sure I mention it. I think most of you are already aware. You know, and you're careful, but that is not me sending out any friend requests. Public pages, uh, business pages like this one, don't send out friend requests. I mean, we can't do that. We don't have that option. But somebody that creates a, a personal page to look like a business page, because it's a personal page, they can send out friend requests. So if you receive any that look like they're coming from Painting with Jesse, it's not me. Block them. If you can help me by reporting them to Facebook, it takes them a long time to do anything about it, but maybe a little bit of help is greatly appreciated okay so there we go so there's the glitter on the wings okay we can layer this add more glitter to it once this dries and it makes a really big difference the uh you know just gets a lot more dense and, and intense but anyway folks back to what i was saying you if you see a 
you receive a friend request for painting with Jesse, it's not me. Okay, just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. So I can also take some of this glitter and I can add it to some of these little flowers off, uh, flowers, these little butterflies off in the distance. Makes them stand out nicely as well. Those little touches. Somebody mentioned that they're, uh, they're nervous about the antenna. Yeah, it's the hardest part of this whole thing, those little skinny lines. I'll show you guys how I make those small lines. You Don't, don't worry about it if yours don't, don't end up being so skinny. Uh, the right brush helps a lot. The number zero brush that I got right now, you can use a number zero or something smaller. The smaller, the better, right? The easier, usually. Not always. But uh, I'll show you guys. You want to practice first. You don't have to practice right onto your painting. You can use a different surface to practice making those skinny lines first. So we'll do that here in just a moment. Okay. So there. Added some little some glitter to my butterflies off in the distance. I keep wanting to say flowers. My brain does that sometimes. Okay. So. Now I think we're ready to tackle the antenna. Going over to my zero, my little zero round brush. Now this is not the most ideal brush. This particular one, because it's a little bent, is not the most ideal one to make the antenna with. Okay, I didn't bring my good brushes with me, but this will do. Okay, so trick is, and I mentioned this earlier, but I want to mention it again. I got some black here. I'm going to add some water. Okay, make sure you have plenty of water to this. Now, you don't want runny paint, but you do want paint that has plenty of water in it so that it flows easily, and you're able to make small skinny lines with this. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I spin my brush. Once I've mixed some paint in there, I'll water in with the paint. I'll spin the brush, spin the brush to make the point nice and skinny. You can always practice on another surface first, making little tiny skinny lines. And the trick is you barely want to, you barely want to, uh, any pressure on the brush, on the bristles when you start to make this. That's why it's important to add some water to the mixture. Now, here we go. So I'm going to start with the little bulbs on the ends of them, the little round things on top. So, for example, my antenna on the right is going to be over here somewhere. Just touching that canvas. Again, practice first. Don't, don't go right to your, if you're, feeling, if you're feeling nervous or not confident at all about this. You're lacking a little bit of confidence. Practice. You don't have to make them right now. You can, make, you can come back and make them later. Maybe you're a little tired of painting. You're feeling a little bit exhausted. Your brain's a little tired, right? Save this for a later step, for tomorrow, the next day, etc. So very lightly, again, little tiny pressure. I'm using my finger here, press it up on the, against the canvas, and I lightly pull my line to the head. That's what that looks like. Really small, skinny line. Okay. Now, if I end up, I make my, my make the head, and then I come over, and my line's too thick. Now I can always make the head a little bit thicker to make up for that difference. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this again. So over here, about the same area across. Start with that. Water in the in the paint, spin it, make that point really small. And here we go. Use my finger here. Really light pressure. There we go. Very little tiny 
teeny little lines. But again, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. I know that this can be a little nerve wracking. Totally get you. Okay. All right. I think we're done. Let me take a little step back. Mariana, you sure can. You can rewatch this. The session's being recorded. Okay. You can even jump over to YouTube right now, jump over to the YouTube channel, um, and then find the live session and just back it up to the beginning. Or you can wait till it's done. We're almost done here. And you can watch the recorded session either on Facebook or on YouTube. Okay. So, what was I saying? Um, the last thing that you would want to do, I think this is what I was saying, uh, is sign your piece. Now, I didn't sign the original, but just uh, take a moment to sign. And you can sign in whatever color you want. I'm going to take a little bit of red. I've got some blue on my brush, so the blue and the red are going to mix. And what does that make? Makes purple. It's all right. Okay. I'm going to take this little area over here. I like to sign with my last name. Okay. There is that. The very last thing that I would do after is paint the bottom edge. I'll flip this over on its head, take some of this blue white mixture, paint that edge, and we're done. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now. Don't need to. But uh, just some things. You can add more glitter. You can add glitter to your, to your flower if you'd like. I have red glitter. Um, actually, has little bits of all kinds of other colors in there, but this is a, a red paint, red glitter paint from Glitterific. I have some yellows in there and some orange, I think, that I can kind of see. This would be perfect for little accenting on that flower. I can take some green glitter paint over my stem. Uh, so a few little things. I can also refine my stem. My stem is as, as smooth as transition from the top to the bottom. My edges are a little bit, uh, they're not quite smooth. I can fix that, but it's no big deal. Not something I can't live without, or not something I cannot live uh, with. I can, I, I can accept that. Be okay. But anyway, everybody, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. So I think he's got a little, a little rush there for a minute when I thought I was going to lose power. I'm going to have to put that unit back on the wall. Uh, I think it shouldn't be a problem. I didn't struggle too hard to take it off, so it should be, should be pretty easy to return. But anyway, please do not forget to send me uh, pictures of your uh, paintings. I would love to be able to share those on my Facebook. If you're on YouTube, please email those over to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. If you're on Facebook, send them to me via Messenger. All right? Okay, everyone, we'll see if I can get a chance to live stream one more time before my vacation's over. Still have a few days left. I'd like to live stream that sun and moon piece that I posted a few days ago when I had you guys vote on what we were going to paint. Uh, so anyway, we'll see if I can get that one in before next week. It's definitely my, my goal. But all right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. As always, it is greatly appreciated. Rosemary, you got it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed having you on here. Uh, awesome, Amanda. Sounds good. Absolutely. But uh, all right, everyone, thank you so much, and I will talk to you very soon. Hope you all have an amazing rest of the day, and maybe before next week, we will meet again, okay? Bye, everyone.